<clears throat> this is an OGM okay, workshop prep how call on October 27th, 2020. Sorry, go ahead, Roman. No, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I was just asking, Ken, how are you uh, doing? How, how's uh, your area there? Uh, that's good. I'm uh, I'm much better now. I'm not my census work wrapped up. So uh, someone was asking me about this yesterday. I said I, I'm not necessarily happier, but I'm far less angry. I realized that I was really getting angry from everything I was seeing, and I just I kept trying to not have it enter my life. But man, it was really really anger making. So I feel a lot better in that regard. Um, it's still fairly warm here. It gets up into the 70s during the day, and but once the sun goes behind the ridge, it, it cools way off. So we're not eating outside uh, dinner very much anymore, which I'm sad. You know, I, I live outside from from basically uh, much as I can from April to October, um, and uh, I'm I'm really looking at okay, I'm going to have to be in the house now for the next few months, and without the general you know the usual use of of uh, being outside for social distancing uh, events for people, it's, it's gonna be a lot harder. Zoom, much as I love you guys seeing me on Zoom, I would far rather be sitting around a table. Yeah, so true. Seriously, here, so yeah. true. Um, this call has no particular agenda other than questions, answers, brainstorming, throwing, throwing ideas in the pot for Thursday's workshop. Just wanted to be available and uh, go wherever the conversation wants to go and not use it so much as a check-in round because that will lead our, our hour right away, but rather see what we're leaning into. So I do have a question. Um, and you sort of answered this for me and, and I'll, I'll probably just post it on to the OGM list. I did, uh, I'm not really great at making videos. Um, so what I did was I took all the questions, I think it might've been Matt that, that wrote them up and I just answered them. So I have a, a lengthy um, list of my vision of the future looking back, you know, with five years. So is it okay to just post that to the, the Open Global Mind list? If you want to post a, a link to, if you did it in a Google Doc or something, just put that on the Open Put it in a Google Doc, sure. <clears throat> that sounds great. Just add the link and put, uh, put the following hashtag in your subject line. So OGM we- OGM 2025, 2025. Uh, comme ça. Uh, just include okay. that in the subject line and that will tag it and then I will add it to, I've got a, let me just show everybody the submissions I've got so far. <clears throat> Have people sent you things that are not in the OGM list? Uh, because ideally we should read one another's. I don't know when I'll do that, but. Um, I know exactly. I think we should try to read each other's things. I'm harvesting them from the list. I don't think anybody sent me a one personally. I think these are all things I've seen float by on the list. So Jack, you're in there. Uh, yeah. Your romancing conversation topics presentation is in there, Jack. <clears throat> um, I wanted, I wanted to, to comment on that. Um, owing to my schedule on Friday, um, Thursday's turning out to be a really nasty day for me. Um, I, I expect to be in, but I cannot make any guarantees of when I will enter and how long I can stay. So it, it may be that I, I need to withdraw doing a presentation. Uh, and basically I can rely on Marc Antoine speaking for topics that, that are important to me. Well, I, I think I, I would like them to make that two presentations, if you, like one speaking on behalf of Jack and one speaking on mine, because we have a lot in common, but we also have a lot that's distinct. Yeah, and, and I don't, Mark, I don't want uh, you to sacrifice what you're bringing into the conversation yourself, Mark Antoine, because you're caring for two people. And I'm not sure we have put you, we just did a little bit of team engineering, sort of sorting people out into four teams. <clears throat> who have registered and I know that the you know the participants are going to change a little bit between now and Thursday but we're pretty close uh, and I'm not sure you two are on the same team so it would be difficult for you Mark Antoine to represent for both uh, so I'll go I'll, I'll take a look uh, it, 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 let me just share the list because it's in the uh, Matt the the Matt designed <clears throat> document that actually has <clears throat> all the agenda and all that. We just put it in the bottom of that. So let me open that and give everybody a, a link to go look at it again. <clears throat> there we go. OK. 
Come on, computer, do your thing a little faster. Other thoughts, questions? Uh, I did not complete work I wanted to do on the wiki, but I have further thoughts on it that I'd like to discuss if there's time for that, but I, maybe there's other questions first. Um, that sounds great. Jack, you were gonna say something? No, I, do, do you have a sense of what time I would, would talk? So take a look at the agenda, the document that I just put in, uh, go ahead and, and link to it. And you'll see the, the agenda for Thursday, which is halfway down. It says draft session in process. Uh, and it, so it starts, and these are all, all times uh, are Eastern. So you've got to subtract a little bit. Um, but we have basically two longish breakouts for, for the teams. And then the draft team list is at the very bottom of the document. And so Jack and Mark Antoine are currently on teams one and two separately. <clears throat> um, so, and then, you know, we, we were hoping to then bring everybody back in at uh, 1 30 Eastern, which is, I guess, 10 30 Pacific uh, to sort of share back what the different breakouts did. And then uh, an hour later to sort this out into, okay, so what does that mean we all need to try to do together? What does italics mean? Italics were people we thought had to bounce out of the meeting. And I will unitalicize Ken because he just said that he's good to go. He'd got he'd uh, mix up the times a little bit. And so, italicizing Jack. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you also purpled him somehow. Oh, I know because I have so to. What, what time do the teams occur? What what is the specific time of day? Uh, so uh, if you look at the agenda, the first one is this synthesized. So team, this is not clear, but. Uh, teams meet at uh, 7.15, so we have a quick introduction. Um, Ken, I screwed up and didn't mention to Matt that you would be interested in doing a 10-minute centering exercise, so let me get that to him and see if we can't put that in the middle here. I apologize, okay. um, because I'd like to, I'd love to have that. Um, so and so, so that's the timing. You're putting the teams at like California time, 7.15 in the morning. Correct. I can guarantee you I am not home at that time. Mm. That's, okay. that's, that's the, the day starts really early. Uh, uh, and, and after probably order of magnitude nine, I'm back. And there's no guarantee on that. So you mean your work day with other materials starts really early? Um, I, I, I am providing wheels for, for Linda. Um, oh, okay. That's st right. Starts at seven in the morning. Gotcha. Okay. And so you've got you to be chauffeur for a while at that hour. <clears throat> uh, so there, there's no way I could... That's kind of sad, but... but you could, you could call in. But you'd be driving. You'd be driving and all that. But you could call yeah, in. That, yeah, that's the issue. Um, so um, it's cumbersome, but feasible. I feasible, but impractical. Yes, there is that. Yeah, it, it's impractical it's, yet cumbersome. It's it it. Trust me, I'd love to be there, but. Um, <clears throat> I, 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 you know, I, I made, uh, I made a, a trade. Uh, um, Linda's providing wheels for me on Friday, so I have to provide them on Thursday. Then you have to give up your firstborn. Oh wait, that's it's long, ago. That. long my, ago. My, my firstborn is thirty-two years old. I don't. You know, too late she's... to give them up. Yes. All right. So I guess that's off the table. Um, I. I mean your firstborn. I don't mean the whole logistics of Thursday. <laughs> she was never on the table. <laughs> I'm sure she was on a table at some point. I mean, seriously. Oh, you, you, you changed their diapers on a table. That's exactly, crazy. exactly. So at one point, somehow, anyway, yes. <laughs> sorry to be a distraction here. Um, so if you, if, if you, if you want to consider dialing in and just trying to be in on the phone, uh, we can help you with, I'll get you the number and all that kind of thing. 
because uh, it's in, you know, Zoom generates dial in numbers as well. Uh, if not, totally understand, and we will try to figure out how to how to get in and through representing what you think. Um, now, wait a minute. Do you have to have Zoom in your phone to dial in? You can uh, you can use just a regular phone call. There's a there's a regular dial in protocol, just like free conference call used to have. Um, I will I will take you up on that. And, and I, again, it's not a guarantee, but uh, I will carry the phone number with me and... and uh, then you just need to, you, you need to give the presentation to link to someone and tell them next slide, please. <laughs> go to slide three, yeah. go to... Except, so, except but that I, is, go ahead, sorry, Jack. I, okay, I could make a printout of my presentation and have it with me. Um, um, all, all right, all, so I will keep that that idea in mind, but again, no guarantee. And also it's the same presentation that you sent that I've put in my brain, et cetera, that that's the presentation? Yeah, uh, except that that, that that was just a draft. In, right. And it's, it's far from the story I want to tell. Okay, because if you send the link before Thursday, we can share the link with your teammates and people can both look at it beforehand and um, be paging through it themselves as you talk, for example. That would be really nice. I will do the best I can on that point. Uh, I, nothing is guaranteed. This week is weird. But, you know what? Um, There's an election in seven days. That phrase, nothing is guaranteed, is like top of my mind right now. I am uh, all over that phrase. Yes. And, and everything is weird. <laughs> and everything is weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is what it yeah. is. Somebody said that. Um, yeah. Frightening. So, and also I'm working on my contribution to the Thursday thing. I thought I was going to get it done over the weekend, didn't, but I should have the text done tonight and I was going to record it also. So I will put that out. Uh, if, uh, if the winds are with me, I'll put that out late tonight. I just, I just want to say, let's make sure that we don't put Jack in a position where he'd be distracted driving. So if- well, I will not do this when I'm driving, trust me. Okay. All right, great. I just don't want you to be going next slide trying to look at your printout yeah. and drive. That's no, not no, I, I, next slide. Hey, is. don't cut me off. <laughs> I'm too old for that shit. The the thing is that 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 um, I will be parked, and and if I know that I'm going to be parked long enough, I will take it on, and I may be in the middle of a talk and have to go. Take I, your phone I, charger I, and your cigarette lighter plug-in. Uh, <laughs> that's how I do it. Yeah. Excellent. And your vitamins. Um, and a thermos of coffee. Words to that effect. Or something. Cool. Other thoughts? Other questions? Other... <clears throat> Thank you. Glad, happy to be solving some logistics here, too. It's, it's, uh, we really want you to be a part of it. I do. And if we don't have questions about... Thursday, then what else that's OGME would you like to talk about? Marc Antoine, do you want to talk more about the Le Wiki? Oui. Um, so, the initial wiki uh, pattern I had proposed, and maybe I should put the uh, design link back in the or share screen, that's easier. Oh, where's my well, let me give you share screen access. That <clears throat> may be useful. Uh, Good. So you have you have co-host now. Yeah, this one. Do it. <laughs> there we go. Good. So tools, tools that review. That's what you're saying. Seeing. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we uh, we had started dividing the Zerata issues patterns, and then I'm like. Okay, well, we also want, maybe I also want tools to say this tool is using this pattern and enabling that pattern, right? Um, and then I realized, well, this is for more for technical tools. What about methodologies? And when is a methodology a pattern as opposed to a tool? I mean, I think we do want to extract patterns from methodologies and tools. Uh, do we want because it's it's a higher level of abstraction. But is that something, do we want people to describe their tools or other tools there that need not be theirs? Like the brain is a tool, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, the 
or is that out of scope for um, the pattern language? That's, I'd like to have feedback on that. So two comments. First, let me frame this so that Romer and Ken and everybody are sort of up to speed because we've been having this conversation uh, in the pre jerry's brain group. <clears throat> um, we, we would like to develop a pattern language for OGM for how we work, what we do. Uh, the pattern language is a distillation of wisdom from a discipline. Uh, so in a pattern language, the first book that sort of explained this, it was the wisdom of how do you design a village all the way down from the <clears throat> airplane view of what is green space, what is building space, all the way down to you know, make sure you put niches in for children, for kids in your home as you've designed. And this was all distilled wisdom, uh, which is bubbled down to memorable titles and then a series of fields that recur um, uh, across each of the patterns. So uh, there's a, what are the forces at play that cause this to be an interesting thing? What is our solution to the forces at play? And then a bunch of other things. And so the document that Marc Antoine just shared with us is um, basically a document that outlines what those fields would be and how the pattern language would work. And so I think if, if that's not enough framing, let me know. Um, and then uh, Romer, go ahead. Yeah, my uh, follow-up question with that, Jerry, is where where do we do the extractions of these uh, languages? So, where do we get? so this document is a design document that you won't need to look at <clears throat> for a wiki that Marc Antoine can also show. That is where we would actually, which is which looks roughly like this. Uh, That's actually, deep. It's it's in edit mode and it's in it's deep in in, in edit mode. But um, if, can you just go to a oh. template? Oh no, and I can't because uh, Pete's been working. It's, it's back up. Oh, it's oh, okay. You oh, have a, a link in Keybase, or I can just put it here too. Okay, I got it in Keybase. Thank you. Different the. And it's <clears> okay <throat> if I share it with everybody, right? So, Romer, the piece you would see is the piece that Marc Antoine is about to show, which will look like a form, basically on a on a web page, which is which happens to be on a wiki, and the form will step you through the things to answer for a particular pattern that then connects to other patterns, and we're using semantic wiki uh, media wiki. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's really, really brilliant about the semantic links. So that when you say that this pattern here depends on this other pattern over there and affects this pattern down further down the food chain, semantic uh, media wiki is really good at uh, making those links and making Doing them the back available. links. See here exactly. when I define protocol, and this is the form, so it addresses silos. So I can add, if there were another issue, I could say, well, it also addresses this one. These are links to pages. Mm. And because I've put silos in what this pa pattern addresses, uh, category pattern, it when I go to silo, I automatically have, I didn't have to write this, addressed by protocol. So there's backlinks uh, following certain links. And, and so this is what I'm trying to do. Uh, to, I, by the way, I, I find it useful to call this a structured database rather than a, a wiki. Um, because we're not going to use it like a wiki very much, um, even though. Which brings me to the second wiki. point. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mix because within the wiki, yeah. within each field, you have wiki function. That's yeah. That's where I was heading. The the, the distinction, I I think most most people when you say wiki, they have a particular idea of you know it's I I get it kind of it's a hypertexty thing that looks like me like like especially when we're using a media wiki oh this is like Wikipedia and yeah we're gonna this use some of the wiki features of this structured database is the way that I I think it'll be most useful for people. So to answer Marc Antoine's uh, question uh, about methodologies and tools. I'm on both sides of it. On the one hand, I think clearly we need to mix in methodology and tools. On the other hand, my fear is that everything we do to make the, the form more daunting and to have more fields will catastrophically reduce the likelihood anybody's going to go in and mess with it. And so if we used wiki, uh, if we use wiki style internal links in what we say about the patterns, mentioning tools and methodologies, we could later retrofit and upgrade and do something else around those. Uh, and, and map to them, but, but, but my fear is that if we add them in early, we're going to kill participation. Please, Mark Antoine. The, 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 okay, that, that's a good point. For me, they were not part of the form. They were, there would be the tool, each tool would get a page, each methodology would get a page, right? 
And what you get in the form is links to this. Now it does make entry a multi-step process, which is maybe more difficult. So maybe we should allow, describe it as text and we'll factor them into their own page later uh, as a way for people who don't want to create a page and look at link mechanics to make it easier for them. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to think of what's the right balance here. Yeah, yeah. anybody else have feelings on this? Yeah, uh, one, one more question is, um, where do we foresee this tool being used? Any specific area of OGM or, yeah. I think it, it depends what we think OGM is, but from mm -hmm. what I understand, OGM is about you know, collective intelligence and patterns of using collective intelligence to solve problems. And so we want to understand, we want to have a catalog of the techniques we may apply to that broadly defined um, goal. And the, the techniques are one thing and the tools are another, but what are the deeper patterns that recur and that we may use in designing new tools and techniques is what we're trying to, uh, is, is a question we were trying to answer. Jerry, maybe you had another perspective. And, and maybe, maybe just an example to elaborate. A pattern I would try to put in here at the beginning and then enter into conversation rather, because I'm sure that this is not the right pattern at the end, but it's basically, let's not reinvent the wheel. Um, and, and by that pattern, I mean that for everything that ODM does and touches, don't go start a new movement if there's a movement over there that we can actually help and, and incorporate and be part of. Don't write new code if there's code that exists like Semantic Media Wiki um, or, or Tiddly Wiki or whatever. We, we, like, let's adapt appropriate. And then what we'll see is that there's framework missing, there's glue missing, there's a protocol missing. We can write that. And then, and then we're basically acting as connectors. But, but the don't reinvent the wheel, um, I think becomes a, a, a pattern that goes into the OGM pattern language. Does that make sense? And does anybody else agree? <laughs> that makes yeah. sense to me. Yeah, and so we need, so, so Romer, the pattern language is meant to be a, a pithy and quick way to onboard new people, a, a good way for us to agree on how we work together Right, so like some new thing, some new project shows up, and we 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 then start talking about how to incorporate what to do, and then somebody will say, no, 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 we could do that, except it would violate a pattern we've agreed to, agreed to before, right. and so let's not do that. Let's obey the pattern, which then leads us to do it in this other way. <clears throat> okay. Is there a way to look at all of this? You know, I redid the Kiss acronym because I call it Keep It Seriously Simple, mm. um, <laughs> and. I think that's going to be really important going forward with this so that we don't end up with incredible complexity. So maybe that's something that would warrant a little bit of discussion, even this week in the workshop, because we want to build on existing things, not change massively, which confounds participation. And well, I've said what I wanted to say. <laughs> and, you, and you've echoed a piece of our conversation. Uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, I guess it was yesterday about about uh, this pattern language wiki or structured database, which is um, pattern languages are really only good and useful and functional when they're very crystalline, crisp, succinct, pithy, name your word. But, but a piece of the process of making the pattern language is to make sure it doesn't turn into really big essays. Um, I love Michelle Bowens and I love the Peer-to-Peer -peer Foundation project, but when I go to the Peer-to-Peer -peer Foundation wiki and look around, everything is really, really, really lengthy. It's, it's not pithy and I have, a, I have a huge trouble sort of getting through it. Uh, it's the, similar to my problem. I used to use uh, Google's newsreader until they deprecated it, but I would go in there and I would read like three things and Twitter, I read 500 things and then I follow links to a couple of really good things because Twitter f enforces, um, you know, pithiness. Yeah. Exactly, succinctness. So for me, Twitter is a better filter for what's worth reading later than a newsreader or whatever, whatever else. So what we're trying to do here is be both pithy, but wise. And so we don't want to put in, be good to everybody as a, as a pattern language pattern, right? It's like, of course we should be good to everybody, but there might be other sorts of assumptions like assume good intent might actually be a pattern in our wiki because that's different from be good to everybody, like obey the right. golden rule. Marc Antoine, à toi. 
I totally total agreement except one thing pithiness uh -oh. is a pithiness is an end result yeah uh, it's 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 something you get at the end of the process it's not something you can assume you'll have all along uh it, yes. it requires work <laughs> you know uh, the, the, the the famous apocryphal pascal uh quote sorry for this long letter that i did not have time to make short <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly. but, but i think that there are are adjectives we can encourage in terms of brevity, succinctness, focus, key points, other things that are able to be institutionalized in a process mode. And, and along that same line, and forgive me, Jerry, if this is already well embedded, but I know you're talking about a different platform for the brain that would do more things that we would want it to do, freeing it. Um, and it would be helpful to be able to segregate the process dimensions from the fact dimensions in many key topic areas, because that would help people regulate and implement further forward. And, and I, I agree totally. And for me, this is the point of the pattern language. The pattern language is all about process. It may mention tools, it may mention methodologies, but that's also process, right? Right. Um, it's not about facts. That's very, and very, very clear. And the, uh, and, and another sorry, precision, uh, I think some of the patterns you named, some of them are patterns and some of them are very much hinting to anti-patterns. And that, that, that it will always be uh, like each pattern has its shadow <laughs> anti-pattern issue. What it What is pro, uh, pro, uh, patterns trying to solve? It's true that when I put protocol as a pattern, I should maybe rephrase it as protocol versus tools or uh, Protocol versus one tool to rule them all. <laughs> um, yep. An important thing is what we call each pattern because they, they, they need to be a little tongue in cheek, a little memorable. Otherwise they don't stick. And otherwise we don't kind of get them and we don't wind up using them in conversation. So we know the pattern language is working when we're busy doing our, our work as OGM and we start citing the patterns. That, that's a, a total sign of success that the pattern language is working. Just to backtrack a little bit, can you just give an example of the separation you were talking about, Judy or Marc Antoine, a moment ago between? Well, I guess I think of the brain as as leading me on a massive encyclopedic mind map of <clears throat> thoughts connected to other thoughts, and sometimes under thoughts there are specific organizations or groups or activities that are fostering the development or evolution of that thought, but having those two dimensions clarified so that if, if I, let's say I wanna know the top five organizations that are doing something globally in regenerative agriculture, just cause that's Klaus's favorite. How do I get to those fast instead of feeding through a lot of other directions? It's a different dimensionality. And, and also I'm trying to, one of the thing, one of the tensions I'm trying to manage or polarities I'm trying to manage is how do we stay kind of meta in OGM so that we can be more helpful to very specific initiatives like Klaus's on soil fertility and regenerative act and like Kevin Jones's on, you know, neighborhood economics mm -hmm. and, and, and so forth. And, and so what's, it's really useful to have extremely concrete cases and people passionate about domains, but we need to figure out how to take that energy and turn it into something more meta <laughs> At this maybe, level it's, of discussion. maybe it's something like case studies. Yeah. Because then you can replicate what someone else did. You don't have to reinvent the whole process. I, and I, and I that might be an extraction. I'm sorry. No, no, it's when you said case studies, I was just writing it in the pattern language, like tools, <laughs> methodologies, and case studies. <laughs> it's like, yes. Other thoughts, other questions? Pete. Um, one of one of my observations about uh, Alexander's A pattern language uh, is that it's got a lot of hierarchy too, um, and usually in 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 graph things hierarchy is kind of a no no. But I think along with pithiness and conciseness and brevity, um, the hierarchy of A pattern language means that you can find your your way to the right place where you need to work. So I think that's. An, an important goal, something again that you won't have have early on, but uh, as it continues to evolve, I think it's a, a good thing. And in the original A pattern language, there was kind of a natural hierarchy because it was about how do you design a very livable village, and so there were there, you know at at the highest level 
how do you, you it was kind of land use and at the very lowest level it was once you were inside a house and in the middle were things like the transition from the street into the house that's a pattern right and then and then after that comes a pattern for how do you place doors and windows on a wall but before that comes how do you site a house on a lot and the order of those patterns in the more or less hierarchy um, was also a distilled wisdom I, I think it, it's a good point and um it's it's obvious what the the hierarchy is in hindsight um but when they were working on it i'm not sure that it was necessarily um it was right. probably kind of like oh i've got lots of things to think about how would i you know how would i organize this what what would the hierarchy be like i think uh in in software patterns um you know which were inspired by alexander's work we we ended up with kind of a big mishmash of of stuff um, and you, we could have had, a, I think, better hierarchy in software patterns, and that would have helped people adopt it more. But it was kind of like everything got thrown in a bucket, kind of, and it, it's it's not as well, you know, groomed. The, the, the software patterns used more the dependency link than the... Yeah. Uh, and then there was the enterprise software pattern work of Fowler, which is kind of higher scale software patterns, yeah. uh, but it came later. Um, but I have the scale variable in the pattern, which I think is what uh, you were talking about. But I think that the usage uh, also forms a hierarchy. I think it's it's a multi-hierarchy. I agree, and that way it's a graph, but I agree hierarchies are important, but there's more than one axis. Scale That's, is an axis and dependency yeah. is an axis. Hierarchy is a navigational feature of certain kinds of pattern languages, and then there are other ways to traverse them as well. I think yeah. that'll work well. Um, sure. A really brief and fun so side story. So Dick Gabriel, who also goes by Richard Gabriel, is a poet, a genius, and has done a whole bunch of super interesting things in his life, one of which was befriending Christopher Alexander, which is no mean feat, because Christopher Alexander is a uh, uh, paranoid, kind of crazy old geezer now, um, and and so so Gabriel basically saw the pattern language stuff and carried it over. He's the chairman. He's been the chairman of Uppsala for a long time. Uh, invited me to do a, a, a keynote at Uppsala in, in 2002 that I've put on on YouTube. So we, I can go put that link in our chat if anybody ever wants to see that. And, and I I watched that talk more recently, and I was like, holy crap! Wow. Um, that's the talk when at the end of it, when I used yin and yang, and at the end of it, a young Asian American woman walked up to me and she said, I think you mean yin is the feminine, right? Because I had reversed them. Um, hadn't done that much homework at the time. Uh, but anyway, so Gabriel went, uh, noticed the pattern language stuff from, from Alexander, took it over into Uppsala and, and helped make it a part of what it does now in software. And a lot of people in software love pattern languages more than architects do. Because in architecture and urban planning, it means egolessness. And there's a whole lot of ego in architecture and urban planning. It's like, oh, that's an IMP, that's a Michael Graves building. And, and, and Alexander is saying the opposite. He's saying the opposite, that the people who occupy a space should actually get to design the space, which is why they invent a pattern language in the first place. And then last piece of the story. So Gabriel got first you know, like galley drafts of the nature of order, which is Christopher Alexander's four volume home about beauty, the nature of beauty. And so, so uh, Gabriel was kind of an early reader and critic of it and stuff like that. Super, super interesting. Uh, and, and Gabriel can go way deep into all of this. Uh, also, uh, Kenneth Tyler, who's in OGM, uh, he and I and a couple other people had a book club way back when trying to read our way through the nature of order. We never made it through the first like 50 pages, but it was fascinating. It was really, so Kenneth runs really deep on this stuff as well. Back to our regularly scheduled program, which is already in progress. I've got a quick question for Marc Antoine. Uh, I, I wonder if you have maybe, or if perhaps we could make an, an entity relationship diagram out of this. Sure. Um, and and then I I wonder if that's useful will be useful for other people or not. I think it would be, even I if you you haven't read that. them before. I can do that ASAP. Absolutely. That's important. I approve. Uh, it will be, uh, I'll use dot or something like that. <laughs> uh, I, I think it'll be fun for people, I hope. Okay. I don't know. I'm on it. 
Thanks. among other things. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to entity relationship diagrams in the in our yeah. chat. It might be late, but it'll happen. Oh, and I'll find that uh, my oops, let's talk. Uh, uh, do you want to unshare now and see what else is up? Remember, what do you mean by extracting? You're muted. Oh, hi, Pete. Uh, I was referring to uh, as the uh, tool extracts the different uh, relationship for specific pattern. Are this uh, information or data being uh, extracted? Are this like uh, static data or, you know, that's already been part of our governing uh, uh, document or are this like dynamic that continuously evolve as uh, the, it's a the the tool uh, I don't think actually Mark and do you want to yeah, sure. it, it doesn't it's, do it doesn't it's a do tool that for, much it's a tool for expressing uh, pattern language um, yeah it's not uh, it, it is very much a wiki it is very much a wiki a wiki okay uh, but but it has uh, some computed queries um see when i'm when i'm saying uh, not this yeah where the, the example i gave is here i explicitly said that protocol addresses silos data silos but because i made that by hand operation that by hand reference this one came automatically so that's all the extraction it does it's not much <laughs> it's it's automated the, backlinks the relationships are automatically updated unlike yeah. a regular wiki yeah. but the work of expressing a pattern um kind of ideating ob observing a pattern saying i th and, and then talking especially i think this is a pattern and somebody else might say well if we make it a little bit bigger a little bit smaller or express it a little bit differently i feel like that captures what we're talking about as a pattern better. So this is really kind of conceptually, if you think of this tool as a, as a whiteboard um, that has a little bit of structured help as we express a pattern, um, that's kind of what we want to do with this tool, at least for a while. At, at some, some point, it'll be a lot more like a presentation or like what I would think of as a wiki, something finished, more more finished, not not static, but more finished, um, or a book or a deck of cards or something like that. It'll be something where it's become a repository of of patterns. But for a while, it's going to be just a a smart whiteboard that lets us say, I think this is a pattern, and then other people can go, and then we can look at it in the structure of all the other patterns and go, it doesn't fit, it fits. If we adjust the scale value of this one, it'll look you know, it'll make the whole structure better, that sort of thing. Let me add something, because because remember, you've brought this up a couple of times. Um, in social network analysis, um, you could run software against the emails that are sent internally inside of a company, and you could then derive from who sent what to whom, how often, you could derive a map of the organization. So the software would be doing a lot of work deriving patterns of communication inside the enterprise, and that's social network analysis. The job of creating a pattern language is completely human. They're, they're, we're not running software against the database of anything gotcha. to try to figure out what patterns we're saying. There's, there's no algorithm that can derive the pattern language but us humans. Now, there might be a GPT-3 AI that could do it with us, and I'm not even going to go there. But at, but at this level, the wiki is only functioning as a whiteboard, as Pete just said. It's, it's only a structured place for us to share what we think the patterns are, but this is all coming out of social conversations of how what we think is important, what to name it, how to describe it, all of that. Does that make sense? Yes, it does now. Thank okay. you. Yes. Okay. Because okay. social network analysis is totally different. And Baldus right. Krebs is a, is a friend of ours. And he's been doing social network analysis for probably 30 years, right? And there's definitely algorithms in there that are deriving important information. That, right. That's not happening in this particular task. That's what I was thinking earlier. Yeah. That's what I Thank thought. You. Yeah. Cool. Judy. There might be a third vector to this dimensionality of the new brain, whatever we're going to call it, because as, as we're talking, I'm sort of hearing the process piece of case studies, how people are working on it and so forth. There's the content piece that's the kind of classic. Here's the context that you talked about when you first started the brain discussions recently, making decisions in the context of knowledge and thought and other things that exist. And then there's, there's a piece that's really the formation of new processes and the 
bringing to this very dynamic. And I don't know how we capture that at this point, but I don't wanna lose sight of that dynamic dimension because it's easy to slip into cataloging instead of learning. Agreed, agreed. And, and, and one of my filters is that something should be kind of a little bit novel and different from what you would expect there to be there to be worth putting in the pattern language. Like, right. like the example I gave earlier, let's be good to everybody is just sort of too obvious a good behavior, yeah. but, but let's assume good intent is unusual and, and might make it in. But, yeah. but, but, but a, a pattern language that gets too cluttered is a useless pattern language as well. Um, I also want to say that at the top of the, I'd like to end this call at the top of the hour because I'm having a different Zoom with the creator of uh, what, the Ysaurus. And if anybody wants to hang out for that, I think he'd be totally open to doing it, but he's going to sort of show me what it is. Uh, his name is Joshua Frankel. Uh, he's gotten in touch. Uh, and basically their, their tagline is the best arguments for everything. So it's an argumentation sort of system. Oh, cool. But if you're, if you're interested and you want to hang out, please do. Uh, but I have to switch calls at the It's an interesting now. tool. I've seen it and I recommend seeing it. Are you, are you going to stay in a, a different, go to a different room then, Jerry, it's, or just- I'm, I'm hosting it in my, in my Zoom, which is this one. So it'll be right here. Okay. So if I'll, we I'll, I'll end the recording. I'll end this recording and I'll start a new recording if he's Perfect. okay with recording it. I might stay so for just cool. a little bit to get a sense of what it's about. Cool. I'm, so other kudos thoughts Kudos to everybody that. for the hard work. <laughs> I have a few minutes if you don't mind, Jerry. You what? I have a few minutes to, to just get a sense of it. Awesome, great. That sounds great. Uh, J Jerry, sorry to uh, insist, but it would be nice to have the, um, set the DNS for this. Uh... Oh, 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 sorry. So Pete, I need to give we, you- We haven't access. directly asked you, yes. Yeah, yeah, no, I, for I forgot that that was a to-do item. So I should go to Google domains and give you access to uh, Create a subdomain on Open or, Global Mind, or, or just or just you create the subdomain and point it to that. Uh, just just an A record. Domains.google.com. Please hold. Yeah, and I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to to note we I think we're going to call this tool Pattern Jam. Uh, OpenGlobalMind.com. Sounds great. Um, Pattern jamming is the, the phrase. Pattern jamming is something that Charles. Why don't about. Why don't I share screen and you can talk me through it? Yay, DNS. So here's uh, Google Domains open. DNS Google on the left. DNS on the left. Yep. <clears throat> Sorry to impose that to everybody, but it's it's fast. You know what? I think everybody be like, "Oh, this is what you do." Yeah. Okay. Register your synthetic records. So host name. You you had uh, it. Oh, up here, host name, got it. Yeah, so pattern jam. Probably. Comme ça? Yeah, I would probably do it all, all minus. All lowercase. But, but, you know, I actually just read somebody saying it's better to use camel case for a um, handicapped person. Yeah. Uh, a screen reader will. A screen read reader case does words. do better with camel case. I'm good either way. Um, so but, shall, I, shall I just add this? Do you want to and then the, the IP address as in the chat, 44 uh, to 39, but it's oh, in the chat. Oh, got it. So copy that out of the chat. Yep. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. Oops, I got to go to the chat because there we go. Here's the chat, I think. Uh, scroll up. Or I can read it, 44 to 39, 58, 207. We've been writing a lot of stuff, or did I just skip over it? Uh, Mark Antoine, one of us will have to edit local settings too, I think. Yep. Uh, all right, I'm not actually even seeing it. Is it before Balzac? Yes, found it's it. It's all the way okay. at the bottom. Got it. Um, oh, you just typed, probably put it in again, but I just found it. So let me go back. Uh, let me move my damn chat. It's oh, funny man. because we that that window's invisible to us, so we see the mouse going seemingly at random. <laughs> exactly. And now because the header of that thing is basically over. There we go. Now I can't get rid of it. Now I can't paste. Okay, good. IPv4. Is that what and, you want? And, and, uh, yeah, remove the slash around it. Sorry. It's just just the numbers. Remove, and just the, the, the numbers. Just, just the, number. the numbers. So kill the HTTP at the start. 
Yeah. So, come sa? Come sa. Yes. Uh, that's come it. Sa. All right. And what else? That's it. That's what we and needed. The rest is ours to do. Okay, good. So, you're cool with that. So, that's all set. Yes. Uh, Mark Antoine, we presumably won't have um, SMTP for a while, and that's fine. That's fine. I think we'll do it later. Or I'll, I'll do it if I find the time, but. I think we, we might need more. Motion. And some there of might be more watching. SMTP stuff. Sorry, sorry, Judy. Um, yes. There might be more uh, DNS settings when we do SMTP, but. Yeah, okay, it needs to propagate because I don't have it yet. And uh, well, okay, cool. <laughs> Judy, you were gonna say? I was just, I need to go to technology school. <laughs> or not, that was like hardcore plumbing. Yeah. <laughs> Although it's actually also something you do when you set up your blog. If so, you know, want to so, get really so, into it. So but one of the reasons I use Google Sites a lot is that I'm really not a geek, but I figured out a way where I can buy a domain on Google Domains, which is where I'm trying to move all my domains now. I buy a domain on Google Domains, I start a site on Google Sites, and then I do three, four simple steps that basically makes it look like a pro website because I mask the URL so that you go to openglobalmind.com, it actually goes to a website instead of going to sites.google.com slash something slash openglobalmind, which looks really unpro. And so I can build I can build a super simple website with a new brand new domain in an hour, no problem. And it's up and it's running and it's actually pretty sophisticated. And if I want to do something better, like I need help and somebody else needs to come in because I've abandoned all my WordPress websites. I hate WordPress, um, but I'm not smart enough to do Joomla or whatever. Like there's a there's I know there's a hundred there's a hundred <laughs> other. Well, there's just too many options, and so I you know this yeah. is like this is sort of like. Hmm. You know, take seventy years off my age and teach me how to do this stuff. You know, <laughs> but but it's, if you wanted to, do, if, wait, if you wanted to be able to do what I've done with Google Sites, I can teach you that in in a little bit. I can share with you the instructions for what. Like, okay, little, that'd be the great. Tiny, the tiny bit of technical plumbing I just did, it's sort of like that, um, but it's easy. It's easy enough to do. So. Okay. That, that's fine. that's great because I I don't I might have the capacity but I don't know if I have the time to learn all the things I'm wanting to learn yeah, as yeah. I sit with all of these high powered people. So mm. another alternative is to have a minion. Yes, hire a minion. <laughs> totally. Um, yeah. Uh, other thoughts? Other other feedback? Other questions about Thursday or anything else? OGME. Are you getting lots of good input for Thursday in terms of what we want for the workshop to be productive? I think so. Um, we're, um, we're, we've gotten some sort of essays and videos and other sorts Please. of things, which is great. Um, I need to finish mine, uh, but the stimulus for all of this really worked out well. And then small side note, um, I was in a different, totally different group call a couple weeks ago. And one of the people in that group call pinged me and said, hey, I, I liked your brain thing and what you're working on and your o OGM thing, let's talk. Um, so his name is Jordan Sukut uh, and he started something called Lionsburg, uh, which, um, and, and he started telling me about it. I'm like, is this like steward ownership? And he's like, uh, yeah, kind of like that. And steward ownership is a really interesting business model um, that goes back to the Zeiss Foundation, Zeiss being the, lens, the German lens maker and as I understand it, which is like really superficial right now, you build a nonprofit foundation, which is the sole shareholder of a for-profit corporation, which then engages in a variety of different activities, which could have different business models themselves. But this shell basically protects the for-profit from acquisition, from a bunch of stuff, lets you put materials in the public domain well. Uh, it, it kind of creates a mechanism that's really healthy for the kind of things we want to do here. So, um, Sounds interesting to explore. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'll put a link to, to my brain for um, the, sh the steward ownership thing because it really is interesting. There might be an opportunity for true creativity in the alliance of foundation and commercial that goes well beyond con conventional current legal structures um, that we could evolve over time with what we're trying to do. Oh, cool. And Jack's got a link already for us on what steward ownership, which is great. Great. Um, yeah. And, and uh, Ken, then Jack, I'm curious whether you've heard much about it and what you think about it. So Ken, go ahead. 
Well, mine is actually a, a totally different topic. I just was looking at the Google Doc that you sent with the framework for um, Thursday, and I realized why I confused uh, the times. Because it's, they're all in Eastern. It's like it's on East Coast. So it's possible other people may have that. So maybe just a little reminder to go out to the list of, please, it is 7 a.m. Because I that's why I said I can't be there from 1 to 2. So. Uh, I will do that. I'll send a, a reminder with a, a bunch uh, of different things. Folks too. in Europe too, or non folks in non-US uh, yeah. who may have switched off to back to standard time already. Yep. The yep. other thing to just be a heads up because it came up with our snarky group is that Europe has changed off daylight saving time. <laughs> so the interval gap is different for a few week, a week basically, um, where from central to Europe is now six hours instead of seven. And then after the first, when we go off daylight, then it'll be seven again. But yep. that might be something to contemplate in communications. I'm hoping that everyone who's engaged with it realizes, you know, where they are. I but it added, actually yeah. screwed something up earlier this week. Sorry, Judy. Um, I just added all times Eastern to the table right there in big type. And I'll say it when a, in a, in a pre-event message Perfect. tonight as well. Thanks, Ken. Jack, you have no strong feelings about uh, steward ownership? And does anybody? Anybody heard about these things? I mean, the Science Foundation pioneered this apparently ages ago, like a long time ago. Um, and I was heading toward public benefit corporation and, and other sorts of things like that as a, as a reasonable structure. Um, this seems to allow you to do those kinds of things also with a, with a bigger, more interesting container. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of in a, in a conversation with uh, Jordan at this point to try to figure out, might OGM be a really good um, incubator, part, incubator participant in their initiative, uh, which would help them help us and would be a really nice kind of symbiotic thing. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Sounds great. That's one of the things as I was answering questions is, you know, are we set up? How are we set up? And so I also put Public Benefit Corporation, but this I've not heard of this, and it sounds like a really interesting way to to go about it. The other thing I'm wondering about is if there might be something from underground uh, cooperatives that we could learn from as a pattern that would help us. Um, so I'm part of the Dig Life Cooperative, which, uh, and then we sort of spun off a little thing called Sense Compass with Christina Bowen and, and Charles and a couple other people. And we were hunting around for, there's a thing called a multi-stakeholder cooperative. <clears throat> Only problem, very few states acknowledge it. There's no track record for doing stuff, et cetera, et cetera. So I think we opted to create Sense Compass as a worker-owned cooperative registered in the state of Washington because it, the laws were better. We could find a lawyer, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that happened a while, like a couple of years ago. Christina would know better about the process and what happened. But what's interesting is that the more, the newer the model, the less pervasive it is and the less help you have and the less, the fewer people there are that have walked that path before you. Mm -hmm. um, Google funded Nathan Schneider at University of Colorado Boulder, who's a friend, to go explore some of these models. They gave him a million bucks to go figure out what are platform cooperative friendly business models. I don't know if that's gotten anywhere. But the whole platform co-op movement was an attempt, a poorly named, but, but very earnest and smart attempt to go figure out how do we build new platforms. The, 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 I went to the first platform co-op uh, event in, in New York four years ago, I guess, three years ago. And the opening question was, why, why isn't Uber a worker-owned co-op, mm. right? Uber is a fake marketplace. Like you get to be a driver or not a driver and you get to choose when you drive or you don't. Everything else you don't get to choose or set. You are forced to adapt to their terms. It's basic. If they want to drive, if they want to do a, a price war, you're screwed, right? And I hate that. I can't stand that about it. So their question was, why isn't this a worker-owned co-op, and why don't workers reap the benefits of whatever it is that ride sharing does? Which I'm a big fan of ride ha ride share hailing, right? So so that's another uh, I think movement that we can kind of draw from and learn from as well. Part of it, I think, Jerry, is that that the Worker-owned co-op is intrinsically high trust, and all of the other structures are non-trust. You know, with rules and prohibitions. So that's part of the challenge. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm opening up Google Domains again. Just, just checking all the all the uh, values and stuff. 
Sorry yep. about that, but it didn't seem to work well. Apologies. We need it to work. Charles, but I wonder if you mind. got bit by uh, summertime. We're still on summertime in the US. I totally did. And I remembered five minutes before the end, at least, instead of after. But hi, everyone. And uh, gee, hi, I was really psyched about today, and I just messed up entirely. And Lauren was planning to come, but she, uh, she then she couldn't anyway. But hi. Hmm. What, anyone hey, want to give a also, recap before the end? And the, we can. Awesome. And I also have a different call coming in in four minutes at the top of the hour with a oh, company okay. called uh, Ysaurus. And you're welcome to stay for it. I think they'd be eager to explain what they're doing for other people as well. Uh, but we're, we're switching calls in four minutes. So here's what's, what uh, is in. Is this OK? It does look good. Let's look like the TTL, too, if we can find it. Uh, where do I find that? Maybe edit. Actually, uh, show me show me the um, yeah, nscloudy one googledomains.com. Let me try adding that. Uh, and this, ah. um, scroll back up and, and uh, where it says NS Cloud. NS Cloud V1. Okay. Yep, NS Cloud one Google Domains. Yep, the name server. NS Cloud. We can ask those directly. And um, Charles, we um, we talked a bit about the pattern language aspects. Uh, first, we answered. We had some questions and some logistics. Uh, Jack is going to be in a, uh, driving and a couple other things about getting on the call for Thursday and participation. <laughs> Then we shifted over to um, some pattern language stuff, which uh, Mark, Antoine, and Pete have been working on. They've, they're using semantic media wiki uh, to basically build up a place where we can go together, write a pattern language, which would be awesome. Um, yeah. And so we want to make that part of uh, what's happening on Thursday. And uh, what we're doing here is uh, the reason I'm screen sharing is that they're trying to make it so that we don't have to send people to a, to a, numeric, a numeric URL <laughs> Uh, instead, we send them to as pattern. Fun as that would be. Yeah, patternjam.openglobalmind.com should work, but isn't yet. Uh, and, and yeah, it, not even on the Google NS server. So I'm really. That's okay, it's, it's not working somehow. It's not working somehow. So let's go scroll down, down to. Custom resource records. Here's the okay, let's add it here. Let's screen. add it here. Let's add it in this one. Pattern jam. Uh, so go to go here and say pattern jam now. Yeah, here. I love that there's some uptake on the pattern jam concept. This is beautiful. And what am I choosing here? Uh, a. a, yes. Just A? Just yeah. A. One H is fine. And then put the same uh, IP address. One H is, yeah. make, make that like 15 M. For now. Out. And then here, let me That's find the same. That's same IP address. IP address without the goobers. Like that? Yep. Added. They'll take effort within the next 48 hours. They, they, they're just covering their ass, I think. They, this I think that's right. Quickly. So there we go. Here's the rest of the mail stuff. All right. But that's it. You no, know, actually, the other thing is that that was where the TTLs were, too. So um, look at that star. It says 15 minutes. Where are you? Okay, uh, so I'll tell, the, I'll, tell, I'll tell you later if it hasn't worked right now. I don't see it yet, but it okay. could just be. Let's so wait. We might have to minutes. wait for fifteen minutes. Yeah. Here's the. We're, we're forty eight hours. We just added. Either. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully not. Okay. Cool. All right, Thank we have you. another call coming in now. Uh, let me stop sharing. Um, anybody who wants to stay and learn about uh, the Ysaurus. Uh, what is it, or what's the kind of hook that I might it's, want to. It's an, arg want it's an ar uh, um, Mark Antoine, you know more about it than I do. Uh, it's an argumentation mapping platform. It's a well-designed one. It's worth learning about. Uh, okay. I, I've seen that demo, so I'll leave. <laughs> Hi, Gene. Okay. Nice to see you, buddy. <laughs> so cool. I do, I do hey, encourage guys. you to see what's going on. <laughs> Have fun. Hey, Gene, let me stop the current recording. Uh, Is that going to be an hour, or what's the screen?